Hi there, I'm Carrie Byron. You might know me from Mythbusters. I'm also the co-founder of Explore, director of the National STEM Festival, and one of the myth fits on the podcast with Tori Belacci. Today, in honor of Women's History Month, I'm going to be giving you a bunch of amazing facts about women scientists. So, you guys ready? Let's get started. Amazing fact. Marie Curie is the only person to have won two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific disciplines, chemistry and physics. Another fun fact. Did you know that her notebooks are still radioactive? Ooh. Your time on Mythbusters and Crash Test World has been inspirational when it comes to getting people interested in science. Aw, did you have a role model like that growing up? For me, my inspiration was my dad. He was incredibly curious and always wanted to do hands-on experiments. So uh, my interest in science is because I had a dad who was really interested in my interest. Harvard University computer scientist and rear admiral of the US Navy Grace Hopper was the first to coin the term bug in reference to a flaw that causes errors in a computer system. In 1947, her coworkers opened up Harvard's Mark II computer to diagnose the source of a consistent error and found a moth inside. That was the first bug. It was an actual bug. Isn't that cool? What's one Mythbusters experiment that you want to redo? I would like to do any experiment that we did during Shark Week in the Bahamas for a couple reasons. One, love sharks. So many interesting shark facts that I just don't get to use that are probably taking the place of where I have where my keys are or other things I should probably remember. Number two, when you were done doing work, you were in the Bahamas with your friends. So Grant and, I, and Tori and I like to uh, go out, eat dinner, and have so much fun in the Bahamas. On October 1st, 1847, 29 year old astronomer, librarian and teacher Mariah Mitchell became the first American scientist to discover a comet when she spotted C slash 1847 T1, AKA Miss Mitchell's Comet. I really do think that Miss Mitchell's Comet is a way better name. Are there any myths that you wish you got to investigate on Mythbusters? While we were on Mythbusters, there were a lot of myths that we couldn't test either because they were in bad taste they were impossible to build. The myth is that colonizers would go to countries that were into cannibalism and they would replace in the recipes human for spam because pork and human apparently taste the same. We were trying to figure this one out because I had seen Fight Club recently and realized that they had gathered a bunch of liposuction fat to turn into soap and I was thought, we could totally do that. We could have fried that into pork rinds and got some actual pork rinds and done a side-by-side -side taste test, but the ethical philosophical problems behind, I don't know, ego cannibalism. Chemist Alice Augusta Ball pioneered a treatment for Hansen's disease, also known as leprosy. And it was the only therapy for it until antibiotics were discovered. All right, I've got another question. What is your favorite thing about explosions? Oh my gosh. Okay, to this day, I still do black powder art because I've never been able to let go of explosions. I love explosions. I love knowing the difference between different explosives. Like if you're gonna get like a pop of C4 or you're gonna get sort of a push of Anfo or that billowing beautiful cloud of like a propane boom, which is really more of an ignition than explosion. But if you're watching a movie, you're watching gas explode. Explosions don't really look like that. They don't have that sort of big burning beautifulness. They all have their own unique beauty. Um, am I sounding way too excited about explosions? I feel like the bomb squad's gonna be at my door any minute. Eunice Newton Foote developed an experiment showing that water vapor and carbon dioxide influence the effect of solar heat in the 1850s, an early demonstration of the greenhouse effect. We've been looking at this for a long time. It's time for us to come up with more solutions. Question, what do you think is the key to getting kids interested in science? That is a very good question. If you're a parent, you are the front line. If you're interested in science, they're interested in science. Do it with them. And if you are a teacher, it's all about enthusiasm and making it relatable. I mean, coming as director of the National STEM Festival, 
I would say it's really, really cool to show kids how science can lead to their future. I love connecting the dots between being interested in science and the creativity of it and future career pathways. Leona Libby was one of the first nationally recognized women physicists and the only woman to witness the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction as part of her work on the Manhattan Project. Fun fact, at uh, most uh, science events I go to, the Manhattan Project is always the name of a very good cocktail. Was there any winner or participant at the 2024 STEM Festival whose story or personal experience stood out for you? So many of them stood out. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, Linda, Wow, this girl had created a science fair project that was focused on mealworm farming and sustainability, and she was trying to innovate a circular food system. But what gets me about the National STEM Festival and all of these kids who are clearly like the best and the brightest and, and the kids that are really thinking about solutions for the future is that at the festival, they created a community and they made connections together. And I really think that there's gonna be an exponential ripple effect into the universe when a kid from New York meets a kid in Kansas or Alaska or from Guam and the two of them get together because we know that collaboration is so important in science. Stephanie Qualick discovered Kevlar by accident while working as a chemist at DuPont in the 1960s. Her work led to so many lives being saved. You've been going through your garage recently sharing some Mythbusters memorabilia. What's one memory or behind the scenes story that's come up as part of that process? Oh my gosh, I have a whole bunch of Polaroids that I took during the show that I'm sure someday I will share, but I love that they're just little snapshots in time that are just us. In the process of going through my garage and finding all of the interesting memories, Tori and I decided that we wanted to do a podcast because we have two decades of stories from Mythbusters to White Rabbit Project, all the way to some pilots of shows that definitely didn't make it onto air. But we have so many wild and weird, bizarre stories. So we're starting a podcast called The Myth Fits. I'm Carrie Byron, director of the National STEM Festival and soon to be a star of the Myth Fits podcast. If you like Mythbusters, you're going to love that. It has been really, really fun to be here. This has been Amazing Facts with Mental Floss.